Hey everyone, Jason here again. Uh, today I'm going to talk about your pocket organizers for all of our EDC stuff, our everyday carry items that we tend to have on us on a regular basis. Apparently not all of this goes in my pockets every day, but I just wanted to show a variety of items so that you got the idea. Most people got the idea just from seeing this that some of us carry quite a few things on us on a regular everyday basis and the challenge of making sure we get all of what we want to take with us and um, having places to put it without necessarily having to wear crazy cargo shorts and cargo pants that have a gazillion large baggy pockets on them that uh, Maybe you were popular at one point in time or another, but not so much. This is, in the U.S. at least, this is not the popular attire for the many, the, the masses. So, these are more along the lines of what's kind of the more popular um, type of pants that most of us EDC enthusiasts are wearing these days. Um, of course, and here in the U.S. at least. Uh, we still have our American blue jeans, your typical USA Wranglers, Levi's, what have you. Um, still, still popular wear. Um, you also have one of my favorite brands with pants right now um, is 511. I really like them a lot. I think they are just a little on the pricier side, so I do have to try to find deals and discounts for them when I. When I do get them, and I definitely have three times the amount of blue jeans than I do my um, 5.11s. And my two favorite 5.11s here are the Defender Flex pant as well as the Ridgeline pant. So, these this is pretty much what I wear on, on an everyday basis in, in the cooler weather um, when it's not crazy hot outside. And... Let's go ahead and dive into what I wanted to talk about today. <clears throat> Your pocket pouches, pocket organizers, EDC pouches, whatever you want to call them. Lots of different names for them. So, the idea is, and why I talk about pants is, these things facilitate the ability to have a little bit more organization to your tools, your EDC items, um, pens, knives, pocket knives, um, little bit bars, what have you, anything and everything that you care to take with you on a daily, regular basis. These things provide some kind of organization to them, whether it's something large, zippered pocket that also, uh, in my mind at least, lends itself better to going on to the outside of a, of a, of a backpack or, um, or if you um, are venturing out on a particular outing with particular tasks involved that sh you have all your tools in one pouch that you can quickly put on your belt um, or pack and, and go with um, and it's already together and organized that way or you have ones that are more like these guys that uh, uh, are a little more streamlined a little more um, uh, what's the word ultra light style, minimalist style, that's what I was going for, minimalist. Uh, simplistic designs that don't quite hold as much, but the main thing that they're doing is they're providing a little bit of organization and they're freeing up pocket real estate for your hands or your phone, your wallet, some of the larger items that, uh, <clears throat> that you definitely don't leave home without, but uh, aren't scrambling to find and gather up and find places to put them on your pants. So, just going to hit a couple of the popular brands um, that many of you guys are going to already know and see as being familiar. The Hitch and Timber brand, uh, they've, they've got a very nice line. They're primarily with leather. They do an excellent job, American made, high quality leather, high, high quality stitching job, all fit and finish is beautiful. Uh, they are therefore on the pricier side, but they sell a lot of them, people love them, they last a very, very long time. And the beauty about leather is if you have, if you're the kind of individual who's got 
these three or these five, however many it is, these specific items that no matter what, for year after year, several years, that's the items that you carry every day. If that's your ticket, then the leather is kind of the way to go because the leather fits and forms itself to the items when you put them in the dividers like that. Um, so your pen, your light, your knife, they're going to, that leather over a relatively quick period of time is going to form fit to those items and you get a very snug, very clean um, pouch and pocket for each and every item, um, which is fantastic. But if you're somebody who needs those pockets to who switches up the tools, the items that you're bringing on a regular basis. If you're constantly switching up what you take with you, then leather might not be the best way to go because again, it fits to one tool. It doesn't. It takes some effort to wet it and get it to flatten out and shrink a little bit down so that you can then have it fit the the next item that you care to put in in its place. Um, so your heavy duty nylon and and um, corduroy or, or denim, whatever, those other materials, your fabric materials, uh, it tends to be the better way to go, the smarter way to do that, uh, if you're constantly rotating tools in and out of it. So, Maxpedition here is another popular one that does that, and they've got a huge line, and they've got, you know, bags that, uh, Molly-capable bags that are larger than this one. Um down to this little guy who's truly a pocket deal, slides in your pocket, carries a handful of tools that way. And this guy's relatively inexpensive on Amazon right now. He's, he's just under $16. Another company that I like, what they do a lot as well, is uh, Yellow Birch Outfitters. They're, again, uh, I th all three of these, the, uh, the Hitch and Timber, the um, Maxpedition, and... Yellow Birch Outfitters, all three of these are USA companies, USA made, in-house, manufactured in the States here. So if that's a big thing for you, these three companies got you, got you taken care of with that. And they do a really good job making really good product. Um, so here's the Yellow Birch Outfitters. Uh, this is probably one of their most popular classic carry one. Uh, gives you three dividers here and then a, a zipper. Um, pouch on the back side of it and it drops into your pocket like so. Here's another one um, that's uh, and they're around $30. Uh, Skinth, S K I N T H, uh, makes these guys. I saw them on online uh, the other day and they looked interesting, and, uh, you know, as, as a solid option. Uh, around $30, depending on which model you get. They've got about five or six different models. Uh, different sizes and whatnot to choose from and so they kind of do the same thing and they seem made pretty well for around thirty dollars pretty much twenty five to fifty five dollars I think is what theirs was so here I picked up trying to go a more simplistic route um, a lower profile the minimalist uh, idea um, at, a, at a much lower budget Besides that Maxpedition one, which is a great guy, uh, being lower budget, around that $15, $16 mark, um, I felt like, me personally, I, even though these things can hold a bunch of tools, um, and the ones that go in your pocket, you know, organize those, those items for you, and they keep them together for you, so that it's um, faster to grab and go with them, they still take up space in the pocket. And I liked the idea, was fond, real fond of the idea of having one of these pouch organizer things that does not go in your pocket, that attaches to my belt, that goes on my hip, on my side, um, and frees up that real estate in my pocket for my hands when it's cold because I'm not a huge glove wearer when I'm just normal, everyday, out and about stuff. Um, and... Um, and just want to be able to put my hands in my pockets to keep them warm. There's a place to put my hands so that I'm not talking with my hands like my mom does when she's on the phone. So, something that attaches to the belt, to the hip, 
was kind of the uh, ticket that I was going for. And this is this guy right here that I've purchased and I've tried out for a little while. And he fits five tools. I mean, I mean you could probably max them out to seven tools depending on the size of the items that you're putting in here. But uh, he does, he's excellent. He does still have a little bit of bulk to him, but it's a simplistic uh, version, not something like this, you know, as far as bulk and weight and everything goes with that. So he was an excellent choice. I like him a lot. He might be more so of uh, around the house or out in the field, out in the environment, um, being outdoors, carrying my stuff and that. But... I also kind of wanted, and it's less than 10 bucks on Amazon right now. I kind of wanted something that was even more slimline, more ultralight, more um, minimalistic uh, than that at, for work. Or for if I'm going somewhere where um, I might socially get frowned upon for having, you know, a tool belt pouch on my, on my hip. So I was looking for something that was more discreet and, and lightweight, ultralight, whatever, minimalistic, whatnot. Um, very basic that would give me three pockets for three to four main tools that I can keep in here. Again, with the whole idea of grab and go, don't have to search for these things that are spread out all over my dresser and my nightstand and everywhere else, um, bathroom, counter, what have you. Uh, that it keeps them organized and keeps them together. That it's just a quick grab and go, throw it on my belt. It's on the outside of my pocket, not taking up that pocket real estate. Uh, and very thin way to go. So I made had this made for me. Uh, well, I mean, I designed it and got the materials and said, Mom, can you do the sewing? Because I don't have a sewing machine. Never really learned how to use a sewing machine. And, um, and you have, so... Have at it, Mom. Thanks a lot. Love you. And uh, and she made it happen. Although, because of the material, material that I got at Walmart, it's, it's a medium-duty nylon with uh, a waterproof uh, uh, coating on the back side of it. Uh, under four bucks per yard, I think, is what I, what I paid for it at Walmart that day um, for a yard of it. And you can make probably three or four of these with a yard. Um... So very inexpensive materials wise, used a, a medium uh, weighted uh, nylon stitching uh, for the stitching for the for the stitching job for it. And because she just has your average Susie homemaker run of the mill two hundred dollar to three hundred dollar um, sewing machine that's not fancy in any way and not industrial by any means. Um, because of the fabric and the weight of the thread, I'm guessing, and the fact that this fabric has that waterproofing back to it, um, the sewing machine hated doing the job, and she kept breaking needles, and it was difficult, and it ended up not being quite as clean as a professional uh, industrial sewing machine job would have done. So, as an extra secure, security measures, uh, safety measure for the sake of more durability, and hoping that this stitching doesn't come undone quickly and, and that this thing lasts me uh, at least a little while with some uh, extra care and caution with it. Um, I went ahead and did a clear um, glue on all the stitching on the back side of it, the side that you don't see. All you see is the front here. So this is the back side. So I, you know, did it all. Uh, some glue all along the stitching. I used a clear all-weather Gorilla Glue, which basically it expands a little bit, basically acts the same way as your silicone um, sealing stuff. It's a little bit cheaper than, than the silicone stuff that you would get to use for your tents and your rain jackets, rain flies, uh, that, that kind of stuff. Um, the, the Gorilla Glue is just a little bit cheaper and I had more of it to be able to use and get this job done. So, that's what I did, that's what I made, and as you can see, it works. I've been using it at work for about three weeks now, uh, um, every other day, pretty much, you know, four, four to five days uh, out, of the, out of the week, and uh, holding up pretty well so far, 
Don't know if I'm going to get four months out of it or if I'm going to get four years out of it. Probably somewhere in between. But uh, very expensive to make. Uh, very simplistic design. There's my measurements for it. Um, you know, that was as wide as I could go for the sake of it fitting between your belt loops on your pants. Keep that in mind. You can only go so wide unless I were to do a more triangular design so that my each each of my pocket dividers would be a little bit wider. If I needed them to be wanted them a little wider, I would have had to do a more triangular design and for the sake of easiness for my mom for sewing and, and the and the just the square look of it, I just that's that's what I did. I couldn't go any wider this way because otherwise it would have not fit between the belt loops of my pants. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is apparently Amazon as well as other online sites and lots of your department stores and, and outdoor stores still sell fanny packs, surprisingly. I mean, I know I wore one um, going to different places and for, for different events when I was uh, you know, a youngin, you know, back in the early to mid-90s. But that it kind of phased out in the late '90s as being a, a becoming a not so popular uh, thing. But apparently, it's still there's still enough use for them, purchasing people buying them, so they still sell them. So maybe that'll make a comeback. Most of today's ones, looking online and whatnot, they uh, they're a little more retro, more tactical looking. Not so much of the 80s and 90s bright colors, tackiness that uh, that these photos, generic photos off of Google that I grabbed are. So t the ones that they sell today are not don't really look like that. Um, but I just thought that was funny. And that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you was uh, you know giving you some more ideas, maybe a little more th thought into. Um, either making your own as a very very low budget option or some of these other ones that uh, that are on Amazon and some other websites that uh, that do the whole attached to your belt rather than in your pocket because I know I know quite a bit of EDC people they have all those different popular brands that uh, that are in your pocket and I just I liked the idea and I think that more people will like the idea of something that's on your waist and freeze up that pocket space for other things. Maybe you've got a larger folder that none of those um, leather guys or those other in, in your pocket ones um, facilitate to, to your wider, larger knives like this pair like a pair two, this is a paramilitary two. Uh, this is a pair of three, um, you know, or your fixed blades, some of your fixed blades that you want to combine with your other smaller EDC items. Yeah, I just, I think that this is, has a lot of, uh, a lot of appeal to something like this. And I would love for somebody to mass produce these. I mean, I could if I, if I tried, if I really wanted to, I could probably, you know, make some phone calls, get some things set up, and make a bunch of these and sell them, but uh, personally, I'm good with just, I'm the kind of guy who makes, you know, subtle changes to other people's ideas, and just for my own benefit, or, for, you know, for family and friends, not so much to make mass pro profit off of, even though I could, I probably could, but uh, I like the idea of the do-it-yourself, you know, homemade uh, aspect, and that's, that's what I'm about. So, keep that in mind. Again, I hope this was helpful, sparked some ideas and some other minds. Uh, hit like, subscribe, share your thoughts in the comments. Um, and thanks for watching. If you held out this long and listened to all my rambling, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, I know usually these videos, most people only listen to the first handful of minutes and decide whether or not they're going to watch the whole thing or not. But if you did, you're awesome. Appreciate it. Have a good one. I'm out.